Josh is studying while I'm going to introduce this video. Guys, welcome <laughs> to Spokane Valley Archery. This video is all about backcountry. Now, we're talking today about what should you bring with you on an extended backcountry hunt. This is obviously assuming that you're not going to pack in a bow press into the backcountry or your backup bow. So we're going, like the premise is, you don't have access to your truck. You're a long ways from it. This is like a quick and dirty repair. We'll go over that, but obviously you should probably have a backup bow and you should, I mean, we've heard of guys bringing bow presses. We've heard of companies that are making bow presses that you can mount maybe mm -hmm. to your truck, mm -hmm. tailgate. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll get into that, but this is Josh and he's gonna kind of go over what system, what kit you must and should have. Well, we're gonna follow this into every solution for every bad instance basically of what the right course of action is. So I'm going to give you a little list here and we're going to start with the most obvious thing you should probably have is an Allen wrench. Now in Allen wrenches there's kits that they're all attached to each other and then there's loose wrenches like this where they're individual pieces. This is the smartest thing you should have in your pack because an Allen wrench that's cut down like that and not beyond the end like that can get to any angle of any screw that's on your bow. There's no reason to carry three different Allen wrenches for an emergency. You obviously want to keep the weight to a minimum. So a set like this that's cut down and knobbed off, Easton makes these, they're freaking great little tools, was probably your smartest bet as far as your Allen wrench is concerned to carry for your bow because number one thing that's going to happen is a screw's going to come loose or something's going to come loose and that's just simply tightening it down. Some people like to go through and pull the screws out and put Loctite in them. I don't like to do that because at some point you got to take it off. Yeah. And when you take it off, a lot of the Loctite stuff, you have to heat it. Now you're heating something that's got camo paint on it and it's going to damage the riser trying to get it off. So number one thing, a loose Allen wrench kit. Number two thing is serving. So no real common thing that's going to happen is your serving may come loose on you that's tied in for your peep or some variation thereof, whether it's a soft knot or whatnot. If you've watched a video on how to wrap a serving or how to tie a serving and have some kind of an idea how to do it, some number two nylon, which is really the most versatile material. Cut off three, four, five feet of it, wrap around a little piece of cardboard, tape it off, stick it in your pack. Doesn't weigh anything. You're not gonna notice any extra weight from here, but you could makeshift a tie to fix something that came loose so it doesn't pop out. Now, on the off chance that you've had a catastrophe that required you to reserve something and your peep sight managed to come out of your string, you should probably have a backup emergency peep site. Now, it's gonna require two people to get that back in there. So hopefully in this scenario, you've got somebody with you. But if you draw your bow back and the peep had come out of it, and holding it back at draw, your other person who's with you should be able to pull the string apart and set a peep back into it. You shouldn't need a bow press for that. Once again, these are all things that don't require a bow press to fix. So having a loose peep site, which once again, doesn't weigh like anything is not going to make a significant difference when you wrap up this serving in a little piece of cardboard put this with it put it in a tiny little ziploc bag in your pouch doesn't weigh anything so that's your serving string loop i would assume too like yeah. a lighter like you're gonna have a lighter because you're yeah. starting i'm assuming that everybody in their pack has a knife and a lighter if you don't have a knife and a lighter you really need to rethink what you're putting in your pack um, but you're going to need a lighter to melt the end of the serving after you burn it. And you're going to need a knife to cut it to length. Same thing if you need to do a string loop. If you've watched our video on how to make a string loop and you've got soft knots in here like Dan does, if you manage to break your loop, you should be able to retie it exactly where it is without having to have any real major knowledge other than to how to tie the knot. So a piece of string loop, preferably if you're smart, you've already cut it at the right length because you know how long it is to put on, but if you don't want to carry a pair of needle nose pliers with you in order to get it tight, if you leave it full length and just tie it and pull on it with your release, then you're going to end up with a different length piece of material and you may just want to start with a bulk piece, whether it be, you know, 8, 10, 12 inches long. Normally you need between four and a quarter and four and a half inches of length of that piece of loop material for it to come out to the right length of this. I would assume most guys would have a multi-tool yeah, them? if you're carrying a multi-tool, then you're good. probably you can probably fumble your way through it and get some good tension on it. Okay. You're not going to get it as tight as you would like to with the so other you're tools. You're saying that it's possible use. to do it without a multi-tool, 
but that's when you're going to want to go a little longer than four and a quarter. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the one instance where I would tie one side and then leave the cord length hanging okay. out the other side. Yeah, and then pull it tight, cut it down, and melt it. Because you're probably going to use hanging on to your bowstring with your hands and hooking your release onto it and pull on it as hard as you can mm -hmm. to get it to lengthen out. Yeah, if you don't have access to a pair of needle nose pliers. But if you have a multi tool, another great reason to have yeah. a multi tool. It's got a knife in it. It's got a needle nose on it, and you can do this better with that. So if you're not already carrying a multi tool, it's probably worth the wait. But that's your decision to make. Um, along with that, string wax. Um, I went on a, a nine day hunt in North Idaho, oh geez, 15 years ago, and didn't bring any strings wax with me. And by the time I was done with that hunt, my string looked like it was gonna break in half because it got hot, dry, wet, cold, almost every day. And it frays this horribly. And eventually the strands will separate, divide, and snap. So having a little tube of string wax, even if you cut this down, half the size yeah. so you're not carrying as much weight rip a chunk of it off you know stick it out slice it off and keep a little tab in, mm -hmm. a, in a little baggie or something so you can just lubricate the exposed parts of your string and in this scenario we only need to wax where the serving isn't so if you look at this which is kind of hard to see it's clear there's serving in here but there's not serving here so this part's where you'd need to wax this part's where you'd need to wax this part's where you'd need to wax you know, anywhere where it's exposed, that's where it's going to wear. But you can't serve the whole thing because then you can't twist it. So that's what you would use your wax for. And if you're tying on a loop, you'd put wax on it. If you're tying on a serving, you'd put wax on it before you tied it on. So another valuable thing to have. I hate using this, but in case of an emergency, if your serving started coming loose and you didn't have replacement serving, a little bit of super glue, stick it on it will stop it from unraveling. I don't like using it because it usually soaks down into the fibers of the string and you're probably gonna have to replace your string, but we're talking about an emergency here. We're talking about, I don't care if I have to come home and spend 200 bucks to fix my bow later, yeah, that makes sense. I need it to work now. So a small tab of super glue, and another little tip for you, if you're not already carrying this in your pack, you're foolish because if you cut yourself open, you can glue it shut with this, okay? You may not be able to stitch yourself if you have a bad one, but if you can hold it, put some super glue on it, maybe a little athletic tape, wrap it around your finger or whatever you cut, you're gonna be okay. It's gonna stop Anytime bleeding. Anytime you have something in your pack that's got multiple uses, you're ahead. And so that's, I mean, super Way glue ahead. is totally overlooked, but when you mention now that you can not only repair maybe a serving, but obviously a cut from like a Havilon or something, mm -hmm. or anything else, like it's nice, because the other gear will break, you rip clothing or whatever, so. Yeah. Well, there's two other things I wanna mention before we get to that. A piece of adhesive back pad, whether it's fleece or rubber-based stuff that just peels off and sticks off. And almost every time I've gone hunting, I've found a noise that I didn't know I had. Right. Because it was loud where I was or wasn't nearly as quiet. So yeah. having something to put on your riser if your arrow is bumping something as it's drawing back or in some instance. It doesn't weigh anything. It's really light. It's good to just throw it in your pack. I almost always find one every year that I didn't see before. Yeah. And if you're using a movable sight like this, have a backup sight tape. If you get into some really nasty oh, yeah. wet stuff, your sight tape may peel off. Every one of these sight tapes has a given velocity on it or a mm -hmm. number depending on the brand of sight have an extra one that's the same one. That's so if really you move your sight all the way to the top and that's where your 20 yard is, if you have the same exact sight tape in your pack, in a little Ziploc bag so it doesn't get wet, if you got some moisture, you can stick it back on there and you're still okay. You could even silver sharpie that 20. So if it did come off, you could be, couldn't you grab your backup tape and be like, okay, I'm fine. Yeah, if you have a sight that doesn't zero stop at the top. Uh, so yeah. you turn it to the top and it's at 20 yards. Yeah. If your sight doesn't do that, you could put a mark on it. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So those those two little things, very, very valuable. Now, we got fill points here. I'm gonna just talk quickly about why you should bring a couple fill points. So first off, just peace of mind. Like if you've been hiking three to five days with your bow and you haven't shot it and you just want to confirm, you might've bumped your bow or fallen, whatever, find an old stump, put this on the end of your arrow. You can shoot into the stump. Worst case scenario, you can unscrew your arrow out and you'll lose a fill point into a stump, but you can check and make sure you're on, um, or a judo point, but I recommend actual fill point. And it's nice, because if you are doing a repair, it'd be nice to confirm that 
everything is on after the quick and dirty fix. Lastly, if we're going to talk about um, in the field repairs, I want Josh to kind of talk about quickly a backup bow, what, what you need on that, and then obviously bow press for the back of the trap. As far as this is concerned, if you have a, a breakdown in your bow that's making it not function, I would think it's probably worth hiking back to the truck at that point so you can have more equipment in your truck to make a repair. So if you're going that route, you need a bow press to do that, whether it's a portable press or a bench mounted press that attaches to your truck or what have you, um, you're gonna need a press. Well, in order to do that with ease, you need a complete another set of strings that is built, that has a loop on it already, that has a peep in it already, that's already set right, that you've gone through and timed it, you've shot your bow, you've ran it through paper. This is a lot of work pre to eliminate this issue, but in theory, you'd put everything on, tune it, set it, make sure it shoots the same as the set you already took off, take it off, paper clip it all together. So mm -hmm. what I mean by that is you take all the ends of the string and run a paper clip through all of them so they can't untwist. So the lengths of your cables can't change, the length of your string can't change while it's sitting in your pack, and then press your bow and reinstall those pieces. That would allow you to repair, say, a cut string, a cut cable, etc. But you're gonna need a bow press and strings and cables. The ultimate thing, the ultimate thing is a second bow that functions. <laughs> then you don't need any of this crap at all. You just grab your other bow, stick your broken bow back in the case, and move on with life. So I used to carry a lot of stuff with me. I just stopped doing that and just carry a second bow. I literally it's have easier. had uh, last year, specifically Nevada. Mm -hmm. uh, I got excited on a bull that was coming in. He was really nice. An arrangement, uh, I don't know, 60 or 70, and I was like, sweet! Went to slide my uh, movable black gold sight, and I forgot to unlock it, so I stripped it. Yeah, because you got that yeah. mitt. Yeah, so I just <laughs> stripped it, and then I literally, so I broke that sight, so I had to go back to my backup bow, which was great, because that thing was stuck at 40 yards. Yeah. Um, two years before that, I had a rest malfunction, and at the time I didn't know jack shit about fixing anything on a bow. I probably just could have replaced the cord, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that, so I went back and got my other bow. Now that was a long hike. That was like, I was probably six, seven miles in the backcountry, hiked all the way back to my truck, got my bow. But if I didn't have backup bows twice now, in those two instances, I would have to be driving, and both those times I was in, in Nevada, of mm -hmm. all places, two, mm -hmm. di three different years apart. There is no bow shops in Nevada. Well, there's some, but okay, they're but probably not anywhere near you. <laughs> and so when it comes down to time being finite, you don't want to spend your time driving to Reno when you're in southeastern Nevada yeah. or wherever, wherever you're at, or sure. Las Vegas. I was basically in the middle of the desert. So yeah. uh, you bring up a good point. If you can afford a second bow, do it. If not, quick and dirty fixes. Well, you got to ask yourself, what, at what point is it worth it? I mean, the amount of money that you spend on your hunt, the amount of time, effort, and energy that goes into your hunt. Most people are working all year long so they can go on that week hunt or a week and a half yeah. um, long hunt. You know, as you upgrade your bow to a new bow, don't get rid of the old bow. Just keep the old bow. It's, Dude, it, they're all guilty. It doesn't matter if it's 10 years old. Keep if it. it functions, it's good in an emergency. Because the reality is, you might need that emergency once every five years, once every 10 years. Every but guy gonna, is You would guilty pay on this any video. amount of money to have that they in that scenario. They sell their bows. When they get their new one, they can yeah. use a couple hundred bucks. Well, yeah, just keep your old keep one. It. Keep Guys, your old one. If you have more ideas on videos, keep them coming. We're, we have a whole shot list, but we're always looking at to feedback and um, Josh is not on YouTube. He's not gonna answer. So you, if you comment, I will just print out comments and bring them in here and uh, we'll go from there. But thanks for watching.